Hello everyone to my new Let's Look At and in all likelihood probable next Let's Play starting on Tuesday, The Darkest Dungeon. Now I've gotten through 13 weeks in the Hamlet without losing a single person, so I like to think I'm at least not terrible at this so far. I've gotten to one person on death's door in 13 weeks, and I'll get into that stuff when we get into the dungeon. In time, you will know the tragic extent of my failings. Okay then, so you might be wondering right off the bat, Baruch, why are there a bunch of skulls on your people's pictures? That cannot be good. What did you do? Okay, that means that there's a really bad quirk on them that the game says you might want to get rid of this. Egomania! The quirk system, by the way, is usually after every other every dungeon, I think it depends on either your resolve level leveling up or something, you get a chance of having your characters get a new quirk. They can be good, they can be excuse me, bad. Like, uh, well, Egomania, for example, there are certain objects, excuse me, that you can interact with in the dungeon itself. If someone's obsessed with money, for example, any of them that looks like they could have money, like a, a treasure chest, uh, a pack of loot, they will automatically loot it for themselves. With her, if something looks like you could be make it about yourself, she will, and all. That, and the problem is, they do it automatically, and they don't use any item. A lot of the interactable things you can use, you can basically 100% make it good if you use an item, but you can't do that if they do it themselves. So they can kind of screw themselves because of their own egomania. And of course, the, the, the buildings are rather important here. You can get new people at the stagecoach, which is really important. You really want to upgrade this, like, really as soon as you start. I prefer getting this, these first and then upping this later. Because when you start, you don't need more barracks. When you start, you need more people coming in. Because I think there's only, like, what? Two coming in on without even upgrading it. And that's not good. This, I've up already taken in two people. Already off camera, so... Now, the sanitariums where you can remove quirks and you can remove diseases like rabies, lockjaw, things like that. You don't want them on your... Well, rabies, you might. Though I wouldn't. It's a, lot, it's a big accuracy debuff. The tavern and the abbey are where you send people for stress relief. Depending on their quirks, they might only want to meditate for stress relief. Some of them might only want to gamble. Some of them might only want to drink. Some of them might hate drinking. You can't send them there. Some of them might hate prayer. They're not faithful. Etc. Etc. And if, to improve your camping skills, which we're probably not going to be getting into camping because I don't plan on going through a medium-sized map today, but if you go through a medium or higher map, you get a campfire and you can basically like eat and raise everybody's spirits by using camping skills or heal them. Or give them a buff. I prefer marching plane because that's really nice in boss fights. Well, I mean, the whole one boss fight I fought so far, it really helped. Excuse me, but... Now, the guild is where you can upgrade character skills. Like, if I wanted to teach her Sniper Shot 1, which I'm not going to right now. But you can do that there. And Blacksmith is pretty obvious. You drag someone in there. If you unlocked the proper upgrade here, like if I did this, I could upgrade her weapon, or I could upgrade her whatever, her armor. So now we've gotten a gist on pretty much all of the things here, you can buy trinkets here for the record. Now that we've gotten a, basically a gist on what all the buildings do, let's get into it, and no, I'm not going to go show you the freaking... I guess I could, it's like right there. Anyway, no one's died yet, just to prove it. <laughs> so let's get going into what would be a halfway short area, well that wouldn't be it, I need that. That's the next boss I haven't killed yet. That's the long one. That's the first one I've seen that's long. Excuse me, the Warrens. Now the Warrens, I could do. Man, I have a lot of bosses I've not really gotten around to doing because I'm like trying to save it for my Let's Plays. Like, urgh! Oh, we're going to the Warrens. And that's not really the group I want for the Warrens. That's the group I'd want for like a Ruins run. Okay, now the Warrens... The ruins and all these things have different enemies that you can kind of prepare for. Ruins has a lot of undead, so you want either a crusader, a paladin, somebody who does a lot of damage toward undead. There's some humans there. Warrens, as I, if I recall, like a lot of like animals that bleed a lot. So I'm going to want someone who can inflict bleed as a tank. So you're a ruins adventurer and you're obsessed with killing, that's not really good. How about you? Aw, oh, you are. You'd be great if I went to the cove. Excuse me, but he will work here as well. 
I don't really like the man at arms. He's like my least favorite tank, but oh well. Which you wouldn't think he would be, but he is. Backtracker, she's faithless. Backtra, let's see. Well, that's uh, that's pretty good. No, which one? That's not what I wanted. I don't want two Vestals on the same team. That'd be like a no damage team. So my preferred thing is you want to be able to hit in the back line. She can do that with judgment. So my big thing, who do I want now? Who do I want now? Going into the Warrens, who can inflict bleed? You have flashing daggers? Yes, you do, but you don't have throwing daggers. Well, you do now. I don't like sending a lot of people that, are in the sh that can be in melee into melee, personally. Oh man, he's got, like, syphilis. <laughs> oh man, how did you- Oh right, it sims with the brothel and he got syphilis. That's what that was. Yeah, the stress relief events can backfire as well, so welcome to Darkest Dungeon. Because he- they're, like, beat- like, Houndmasters are really nice in the Warrens, I think. Because they can inflict bleed and attack the back line whenever they want. Oh man, I hate to send somebody a syphilis though. Welcome to the part of the longest part of my getting ready for battle. Trying to figure out who in the hell's going and where in the hell they're going to be in the thing. Oh, that's really nice. I think I'll just send her. Problem is, this lineup doesn't really have backline reach. I normally like having someone who can at least hit the backline. Uh, well, I mean, she can hit the backline, she can hit the backline, but she cannot. I might want to just send him instead, because he can hit the back line with pistol shot and, well, he can't hit it with grape shot blast, but... What the hell? He has wicked slice, I've never used that. But he can use it where he is anyway, so yeah, that'll work. We'll go there now. And now we get to the provisioning. A very important part of Darkest Dungeon. You usually want to have at least 12 food. You can go with less, but the hunger of random events can really screw you hard. Now, I don't really remember how many shovels I need there. I usually don't take more than three. The Warrens, you're going to need bandages, though, I remember. And probably going to need... I usually overstock a little bit. I realize that. I actually did not mean that. Uh, let's see, so that's three. Always want to make sure you carry torches unless you want to go for a dark run, which I'm not confident enough to do so. Food you need for the events, and if you don't eat when they get hungry, they get really stressed because you're, they're basically starving. So, let's get going. I realize I've spent like 10 minutes just preparing for the thing, but in Darkest Dungeon you have- I didn't put my trinkets on. Well, I can do that when I get in there. <laughs> you always want to make sure you have your trinkets on. Because that's a- that's a fairly sizable difference. They breed quickly down there in the dark. But perhaps we can slay them even faster. Oh wait. We- we- we cannot because- oh my god, I didn't get the trinkets. I thought you could get the trinkets from- like you're... Uh, no, well, we're doing it without trinkets, apparently. Not a good start. Not a good start at all. Wow, we... Hazards possessed by evil intent. Like I said, not a great start. Sweet. So this is a form of currency. You might have noticed on the bottom of the screen back at the town. That is really nice to get. Okay, so you might be wondering what happens when the light goes out. Right now... Trinkets and baubles. Paid for in blood. Right now we're in radiant light, which basically means we are at, we are in the driver's seat. We have scouting, we have monster surprise. The lower it goes, the more stress you get, but the lower it goes, you more you get more crit, but the uh, the monsters get more crit, and I think the monsters get more accuracy as well. So it's a risk be reward thing. I prefer staying in radiant or at the very least, like down here. So now we're into the actual battle itself. And you might be wondering, what's the what's the procedure here? Are we going to take on the big guy first? No. I don't take the big guy on first. I usually either take on the Cutthroat or the Fusilier, usually the Cutthroat because he's the one that does more damage. The Fusilier, I think, does have Death Strike, though, on this Blanket Fire, which is really dangerous. Or you might think, well, can, well wouldn't you just want to hit them both with, like, flashing daggers? Personally, I don't like AoE nearly so much. I like focusing down single targets so that they die faster, so that more hits aren't going towards your party, and it just can cascade from there. Question is, which one do I want? That has a higher hit, to, higher percent chance to hit, but does less damage. Because he has 15% prot. Mm. But he does have shank and all these really bad skills. 
I think the cutthroat usually does more damage, whereas the fusilier is more just peppering everybody with, you know, strikes. But the bloodletter does cause bleed, which is a it's a nasty thing in and of itself, so which one do I want less of? I value getting rid of the one that does a crap load of damage first, personally. Continue the onslaught. Destroy them all. Damn right. I love that narrator, by the way. He makes everything sound so freaking awesome. And we're not healing yet. Screw healing. We do that when there's one enemy left. Damn it. <laughs> oh no. Well, at least I didn't really hurt all that badly. Excuse me, well, that kinda hurt. Problem is, well, this should hit him. This should be an accuracy buff. Yeah, that's a. because she buffs herself every time she uses Throne Dagger, and that should kill him. Their formation is broken. Maintain the offensive. All right, now we can start bleeding him out, because he is vulnerable to bleed. He only has 20% debuff towards it. And stacking debuffs is nice early on, which is not really now. <laughs> okay, so she's our healer. She can also stun, but trying to stun the big guy here is a coin flip that I don't care to try and attempt. So it's either which heal do I want or do I want... I, yeah, I should probably heal at this point. She has four gone, he has five gone. Well, that works. Usually you don't want to start healing too early. If you start healing too early, you're just trying to play a, a catch-up game, and a lot of times the enemies will damage you in the catch-up game, so that's not really good to do. So you usually want to at least get rid of one before you start doing trying to do that. Oh, I just keep stacking that bleed, baby. He's gonna die before his... Oh my, that's gonna hurt like hell. Yep, that hurt like hell. By the way, your highwayman can get Point Blake shot, I just never really go for it. I've never actually done this, so let's see how much... Oh, that does a lot of damage. Does that move him forward? No. Prodigious size alone does not dissuade the sharpened blade. Okay, so an unlocked strong box. I think unlocked means you can normally just open it without using a an item. Sometimes those can, let's see, 30% blight skill, no one here uses blight. Huh. Well, that can go in the old inventory for now, I suppose. And scouting is really nice. It tells you what to, ex what to expect. Now, the problem, one problem here is you don't really get a chance to heal, pray tell. I could use a... I'm going the wrong way, aren't I? Yeah, I'm going back the right way, okay. Uh, you don't really get to heal outside battles unless you want to eat what's left of your food. So you do want to try and heal during battles as best you can. I didn't really do that that time because I killed them too quickly <laughs> for my own good. Now this is an event right here that if you don't use, I think it's bandages, you end up getting bleed on the character that you do this with. So you want to make sure you're clicking on the character you want to do this stuff with. And we're going to do that with you, sir. By the way, if you have an antiquarian in the party, let them do all these. Because you get some really, really nice stuff. And we got some extra food! So you get to eat some food. And you get to eat some food. There you go. Not a lot of damage repeat, not a lot of damage regen, but it will do what is needed. Excuse me right there, I had to cough. Anyway, need to burn another torch, because I don't- I like getting the surprise. You get double the chance to, to surprise the enemy if it's radiant light. Didn't really work out that time, by the way. Surprise means you get to attack first. And normally, you want to attack the one in the back, because they're the ones that are going to be inflicting the stress. And stress is really not a good thing. Like, really, really not a good thing. Ah, crap. I let Rind go a little too unanswered pretty often. It's not good. I have no... Oh, that's marked her. I was like, I have no idea what that does, but... Uh. The one thing I do like about the Man-at-Arms is he can attack three, uh, three deep. Which is really nice. 
I'm letting everybody's health get a bit low here before you start getting nervous. I know what I'm doing. Don't worry, I know what I'm doing. Kind of. Kind of being the operative word there. Normally, you don't want to heal, but we, uh, we do have the numbers advantage here. I feel I can do this. I probably should have healed the man-at-arms because he's the tank, but I'm an idiot and healed the grave robber for some reason. But I, I, I think I should be fine here. Exposed to a killing blow. Things are starting to spiral. Yes, I know you need a bandage. Stop whining about it. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. Okay, so now we finally got that done. That's one less source of damage coming in, and hopefully my Vesta will be getting a turn halfway soon. There we go. Now we're pulling it back from the brink. You don't need no bandage, just just bleed. That'll get rid of it soon enough. As the fiend falls, a faint hope blossoms. Yeah, you can you can bleed and blight dead corpses. No, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but it can happen. Okay, so she's got to either do this. But she's not blighted. I don't know why I have that on her right now. I think that's because I had her in the Warrens prior, but oh well. Excuse me, so I'm either going to have to hit a couple of corpses, which is just stupid, or just do this. Which is not much better, but at least it's a little better. A powerful blow. Wow, wait, my Vestal is, must be really slow. Yeah, she's... Oh, whoops. She has slow reflexes. That's not good. Well, it could be worse. That does... Nothing, because I can't hit her with it. That does... 7 to 14. That does 5 to 10. Yeah, let's go for the potential... Ah, uh, no. No, no, no. We'll stack the bleed, but I wanted to get another heal in. I don't really like Divine Comfort all that much. I prefer focusing. Oh, gotta go with you. You're gonna be taking the bleed more than the other ones, Will. For the record, you can also, you know, use your bandages to staunch the flow of blood, but personally I always feel like that's a little bit more of a waste, considering you can use them on Curios or whatever they're called. Okay, nothing in this room. That is good news. Okay, so let's get moving up to here then. This is a really short dungeon. This is about what I wanted anyway. Okay, so now that nobody's bleeding out their foot again, let's keep on moving. I really oversupplied with the torches this time. I thought there was going to be a... Normally the short dungeons are a little longer than this. Normally there's like a backtrack room you gotta go through here or here or somewhere and... You gotta make it a little bit longer. This is either gonna go really... I was gonna say really nice or really poorly. I could kill him. Be gone, fiend. Now, these things are the exception. You want to do AoE against these because they don't have a whole hell of a lot of health. Another abomination cleansed from our lands. Well, if we're in the proper position, we, I would have been AoEing, but we're not in the proper position because we got surprised. Usually I check the actual numbers. If you go by these, it's kind of hard. Well, they really don't like you, dear. They really don't like you. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. The one roll that would... Oh, man. By the way, always go for the one that's low. Executed with impunity. I should probably be using these things to move, but as long as he doesn't get the minimum roll again, we'll be fine. Another one falls. So now let's re expedition at least promises success. Let's re get our crew here in the right area, and let's keep on moving. By the way, I should probably 
start healing a little bit. I mean, we have more than enough food for this short dungeon. It's not a big heal, but every little point in health helps. Excuse me. Again, As the light you get better. Spirits are lifted, and purpose is made clear. This is the random event. If you don't, you take 20% more damage plus stress, and that's not good. You want to eat the food. That's why I always save at least four. Anyway, yeah, as the light goes down, you get better loot as well. So that it, there is an incentive to go lower light. I just usually prefer the safety of the not Watch low light. Step. Yeah, by the way, you can do that in the middle of a loading screen, at least now. I don't know if you could before, but at least now you can. So this is going to be a battle either in here... Or by the way, if you like finish all the battles in the dungeon before you get to the final thing, it'll be done. So if you all of a sudden go, Mission complete! And you're like, what? I'm like five rooms through the dungeon. That means you got every battle in the dungeon done. You know, I don't really like all the traps. But I guess that's the purpose of them, isn't it? Wealth beyond measure. Awarded to the brave and the foolhardy alike. I'm just going to tell you right now, don't ever use a torch on the books. I made that mistake once and I ran away. Do not ever do that. I'm, I, you, can, you don't have to do anything with them. But, I mean, obviously it is rather nice if you can get something out of it. I think you can get like a positive quirk out of that. But I'm not going to... I'm not gonna screw with it. You know, that just doesn't seem like a bright idea, to put it uh, in, a, in jokey terms. Let's keep four food in case we get the random event, and we will keep on going. That's another book thing. Oh, this is a terrible group. Oh, God. Why do you do this? I have full radiant light! This? Oh god damn. This is not right. It's not right at all. This ain't much better, but at least I can heal here. I really didn't want to be in this position, to for the record. Back to the pit. And Brescent, the MVP here. Jesus Christ. That'll work a bit better. At least now we can actually use most of our skills. Which I kind of would like to do. But you guys are like, no, we get all the first turns because screw you, that's why. Also because like... Also because we're like all slow as molasses. That probably doesn't help matters. Mm, three to seven, no. Better off just trying to... Those things hit so hard, though, the slashers can. The madman is really bad for stress, which could screw my grave robber, so I should probably go for him first, but... Problem is, the man-at-arms can only hit three deep, so... He has better chance of actually... Being able to do something with that. Oh god, because he's... Because he's there. He has to... Oh god. Should have foresaw this. That could kill it. Annihilated. Resent the MVP of the of the dungeon right here, man. Okay then. This game can be very difficult if you don't actually think about what you're doing. You know, you can actually oh well here we go. Yes, when they can't take the stress anymore, they become afflicted. This is the first time I've ever gotten afflicted, for the record. <laughs> so, I guess this is the poorest play I've ever done until now. Also because I... well, I don't know why, but masochism is not good. Masochism means that they will sometimes, I think, just go to the front of the party because they want to get hit. 
And that's really, really not good. The way to get rid of afflictions, I think, is that you have to get their stress down to zero back in town. So I'm probably either just going to get rid of her, in all likelihood, and then... Well, I'll probably just get rid of her because it costs a lot of money, I'd imagine, to do that. It's not efficient whatsoever, but I need someone to hit the back line. He can do that from back there. Because the... Now, normally, this would be where you have, like, an occultist or anything else that has, like, a... I don't know what those moves are called where they clear the enemy line of corpses, but we don't have that because I kind of forgot all about it. So, um... You hit that corpse. I... I wait, no. That'd be stupid. I don't know if you can guard the stress things or not, but I'm gonna do my best to try and keep her alive. Well, no. I should do this. At least make it so he can hit it next turn. Can you stop targeting her? That's really not good for the record. If they get to 200, I think they have a heart attack, which is really not good. Triumphant pride precipitates a dizzying fall. Now, that was a misplay there. I targeted the damage dealers instead of the stress dealers. I thought that was the bigger problem. Apparently, I was wrong. And that's probably going to raise everybody's stress level. <laughs> they have a bad habit of doing that. If only treasure could staunch the flow of otherworldly corruption. Okay, everybody, this is the last room, so let's heal up before we go in there. All good. Well, she doesn't want to eat. Not anymore. <laughs> okay, before we do anything here, we need to get our stuff back the way it should be. And put you there. Okay. I think that's about all we need. And you won't eat, will you? No, I guess you will eat. Okay, then. Don't you even go to the front. Oh, good. good. Just completely try and pit... <laughs> Alright, well, that guy causes bleed. That guy, I think, causes bleed. He causes stress, and he causes stress and blight. Well, this is a crappy situation, all in all. Uh, no. Let's go with the stress. I learned my lesson from last time, hopefully. Good, some lucky dodges. And she's marked. Not who I want marked. At all. Damn! <laughs> Resent, my man! Apparently she doesn't want to get hit. That's a surprise. Now, the question is... I don't usually rely on stuns because they seem to miss very often, but that thing only has a 10% stun resistance. These two. Hmm. That's tempting. But... That is really tempting, actually. is struck. A blazing star is born. Okay, so... Jeez. <laughs> I guess stun's better than I give it credit for. I usually don't stun Jack. You just have to know when to try and stun, I guess, because normally, I've, the less plays I've watched, <laughs> I've people just kind of, like, rely on stun. Can you stop just stressing everybody out with your masochism, for God's sake? That's why you don't want afflictions. They're really bad. Oh, come on! Just in this. God damn, man! I love you, Resent. 
You're my new highwayman. <laughs> he doesn't give a crap, he just crits everybody. That stuns, I think. Which is not a huge thing right now. Well, I gotta say, that does at least... Well... <laughs> probably does. We need to probably heal her, but she probably won't even take the heal. Because she's nuts. Okay, Blight's just stupid here. I'd be... Are you Blight? No, you're... Mmm... What can I... Well, poison darts can hit. The only thing I have is poison darts, which is a 60% chance of not even hitting. Yeah, I didn't... I didn't think that would work. <laughs> Bleed will, however, work rather well. I know you're not going to like this, dear, but I'd rather you not go to death's door. And it gives him a buff anyway. Okay, since this is the last... Oh, for God's sake, you get a turn? Well, at least it's giving him a debuff, I guess. He should be dead. Yeah. The slow death. Unforeseen. Unforgiving. Oh good, I actually got an achievement. That's cool. And that's basically how an adventure goes in the darkest so dungeon. Should have never happened. You are doing just work ending them. I think I actually spent a little less money than I earned, which is good. Though, normally I try to take a little bit more substantial. Like, normally you want to go to medium or long-sized dungeons. You can get a lot more money that way. Ruins Explorer, which is good. And tough. All oh, rest sent, my man. He's just good all around. He's proven himself. 10% more HP on a highwayman is not the best. But... Fosters skill and confidence. Okay, yeah, that's another thing I never really went into is if you go to, I think it's Options Gameplay. Personally, I I guess I just didn't want that thing checked. Anyway, I think I was checking to see if I can turn off town events. You can, by the way. I like to keep them on. So I, there we go. But yeah, you can tailor this to your own thing if you think, well, I don't like where if I can retreat, like in uh, the only thing I can think of is like Persona 4 or, Final, or Persona 3 and like uh, Final Fantasy 10, where if you try and retreat, you can fail and then just die. Or if you want to, you know, get rid of any of these, you can do so. Personally, I like to experience the game the way it's meant to be experienced my first time. Anyway. After you get back to town, you can do whatever all again and again. Also, there's a little activity log telling you what happened. For example, if I'd sent someone to stress relief and had a bad experience, they'd say, you know, so-and-so ran off, or they have a hangover now, or whatever, and giving them a debuff, like accuracy debuff, or whatever. You can see it here in the activity log. You can bring that up again by doing this. And that's Darkest Dungeon, folks. You can see exactly what you're going to get if you play this now. So thank you guys very much for watching, and hopefully I'll look forward to my new Let's Play in Darkest Dungeon, probably, like I said, on Tuesday, unless I change my mind, which is very, very unlikely, because I love this game. So, farewell, everyone. Until then.